Hey guys, welcome to episode three of my vlog uh, for Mental Health Awareness Month for Uber. Um, this episode, I really want to focus about my journey within Uber, um, how I started and kind of also some of the mental health issues that I've faced whilst being here. Um, like I've said in, in previous vlogs, like my mental health issues have not disappeared ever since being at Uber. They're still very much apparent within my life. Um, and I have to deal with those on a day-to-day -day basis. But the way that I've coped with them um, from when I first started to now are very, very different. And I've had some amazing friends and kind of managers and mentors that have kind of helped me steer me in the right path and also a bit of um, self-assessment along the way as well. Um, so to start, I started at Uber over three years ago now. Um, and I started as an expert in Portsmouth. Um, at the time, I was the only expert. Um, I was looking to grow a city very, very quickly. And anybody that's been at Uber for a while will, will attest to the fact that Uber was non-stop back in the day. Um, very good old school ops work where one minute you'll be doing onboarding, the next minute you'll be adding promotions to accounts or doing kind of incentives for drivers to drive in your city. Um, and then in the evening you would have some dinner and then go out and start trying to get more drivers on the platform. Um, and for the first few weeks of my Uber life, that was super exciting because I'd come from a job that was very mundane, nine to five, um, very stable and steady pace for me. And in a way that kind of helped my mental health because I, it was a very much a routine that I was stuck to. And with anxiety and especially with depression as well, um, that having that routine is something that you can kind of fall back on when you're feeling low. Um, it can work in opposite ways, but for me personally, having a routine like that um, kind of can mask my mental health um, to the point where I feel like it's almost non-existent. Um, and that can be a dangerous thing and I'll kind of lead on to that later. Um, after a few weeks of being at Uber, I kind of really understood that I was coming home really drained and mentally drained. Um, and I thought it was because it was something I wasn't used to and it kind of a new thing, but it really wasn't. It was the fact that um, I was really struggling with kind of being an extrovert in in kind of this persona that I that I've kind of got to to drivers and to to councils and to other businesses as well. Um, and I, I'm far from being an extrovert, so it really took a drain on my mental health. Um, and at the time, I had some kind of really big trauma in my life where. Uh, the kind of foundations of what I relied on outside of work crumbled beneath me. Um, and this was the first time I realized one of the ways that I can kind of improve my mental health um, was realigning myself. And you'll hear me say that quite a few times in this video. Um, and realigning myself at that particular time was it took one of my best friends who now works for Uber um, to take me out of the situation that I was in and kind of re just really just focus on people that cared about me and people that I felt safe around. Um, that person means the world to me and is, is my best friend to this day and I can't thank them enough for the support that they've given me. Um, and it, at that time, I thought that removing myself from every single situation uh, if I got anxious or, or kind of mentally drained was the way forward. Um, and at that time, it took me two or three days to kind of get over that that kind of issues and I was back in work again. Um, but I felt better. Obviously, I had that trauma that was still lingering there, but I, st I still felt okay. Um, moving down kind of a bit further down my Uber career, I ended up getting promoted to being a people manager uh, in the South Coast and looking after Portsmouth and Southampton. That led to kind of another issue where I wasn't just having to look after myself anymore. I had to look after a team and I was accountable for, for people um, to succeed within their time at Uber. Um, and first of all, I, I, I can safely say that I wasn't a great people manager and I was still learning today. Um, my team will, that I have now will attest to it and the teams that I've managed before will, will attest to it as well. Um, I found it a real big struggle to look after a group of people and help them drive for success whilst also looking after my mental health as well. 
There was times in the South Coast where um, issues got really on top of me and I was unable to cope. Um, and I was going through a, a therapy session at the time called IPT, which is interpersonal therapy. Um, that helps you really kind of uh, get over loss or separation of someone or, or something. Um, and I was doing that every single week um, whilst going through some problems that I had at work as well. And um, it led to me making kind of bad decisions. And I then kind of remembered back to the fact of that if I take some time to realign myself, that I know that I can refocus back on this and really drive performance. So what I did was I attempted to realign myself again. And I, I, the first thing I thought to myself was, I'll take a few days off, I'll come back and everything will be fine. Um, but it didn't work for me that second time round. I came, I had a few days off, but I was still worrying about work. I came back and work was still there. It, the, the situation hadn't changed. Um, so I kind of brought this up to my, to my counselor, to my family. Um, and we really kind of looked at why it didn't work this time around. And it was because I wasn't self-aware of how I was feeling. I just thought if I take this time off, I'll get better. Um, so I spent some time kind of really looking into my triggers, which I mentioned in episode two about kind of my hand shaking, kind of how I want to run away from the situation um, and how I can develop those to think in the moment to improve my mental health. So one of the best examples was that um, I would, get an email about an issue that had happened with a council and it could be threatening to our license or it could be threatening to our, our way of operating within that city um, and I had to kind of what I would do is literally just pause and go right what's gone wrong and then kind of underline those issues the next step would be what is in my control and what is not this is the biggest thing that I've learned and I can't um, impress enough to, to kind of people to kind of take this method if it works for you. Um, looking at kind of what you can control within a situation that's making you anxious is super important to make yourself aware. So in this period, I couldn't control any of the factors that had happened. I couldn't control kind of the decision that other people made. But what I could do is continue to ensure that those mistakes wouldn't happen again. As soon as I kind of practice this on little incidences and bigger incidences, it started to become a lot easier. And that led to kind of me taking a, a team that I'd really struggled to manage. And hopefully I could say by the end of it, I felt like I felt a lot better. And I felt like the team was gelling more. And I, I love that South Coast team to this day and that I'll always be there for them to help them. And um, it's great to see that they've they've all gone on to do some amazing things within the company. Um, I've then taken that next step and I'm now in Manchester and I applied for the Manchester role, which led to another whole uh, plethora of feelings and worry and anxiety um, that just didn't relate to just about work. It was about moving across the country, up the country to, to a new job where I didn't know anyone um, I didn't know where I was going to live, like, but I really wanted this job because it was a new challenge for me. Um, and I went through that inter interview process and it was the most daunting thing in my life. Um, being moving a lateral step within the company and trying to impress people that I'd not had much interaction with before. Obviously, after the interviews, I was lucky enough to get the role and um, then it came to the fact of, I've got to manage a new team of people that I don't know, uh, I haven't worked with before, and I've got to ensure that they, they drive success. And my Manchester team have been amazing from day one. They welcomed me here, and I was very open with them about my mental health um, and my anxiety, and um, some of the team will, will always kind of reassure me if they say something or or kind of make a joking comment um, about something, they'll always reassure me that I'm doing a good job. They'll also tell me if I'm 
they don't agree with what, what I'm saying or kind of they have a different view or opinion on it, which has really kind of boosted my confidence. Um, and having a mentor also as well like Jay has been massive to me. Um, and Jay is very much a, a promoter of me to realign myself. And now realigning myself now looks a lot different to what it did when I was in South Coast or, or when I first started at Uber. Um, a realigning myself session now is really kind of focusing on kind of me in general and not getting emotionally attached to projects or kind of um, workloads or, or kind of stresses within work, but giving my team or the stakeholders the right amount of tools um, and the right amount of information for us to make a good business decision. Um, and holding my team and my kind of uh, the stakeholders that I'm involved with account to, to kind of the data that I'm providing them or, or kind of the tools that I'm providing them to succeed. I would have never been able to think about it that way three years ago. And that's been a huge, huge thing for me. Um, and I still worry to this day about decisions that are made or if comments are made, I can take them out of context. Um, but having a strong mentor like Jay um, has really helped me um, kind of move forward. And I've had amazing mentors throughout my time at Uber. Um, Fred Jones, Harry Reid have been great people that have really supported me and my mental health. Um, and I can't thank them enough. Um, so if you ever get the chance to have a really strong mentor or a strong manager, be open with them about your mental health. Um, be open with them about your worries even if they sound super, super stupid, don't be afraid to talk to them about it. Because at the end of the day, they're never gonna shout at you about worrying about something or being anxious about something or being sad or depressed about something, but they'll help you. And I like to kind of put that on my team as well. Like if they're worried about something or they're, they're sad about something, I really encourage them to come and talk to me about it. Um, because I'll do everything in my power to help them. And if I can't help them, I'll pass them on to a, a kind of a team that will help them, but I'll always stay there through that journey with them to, to ensure that they feel okay. And that's what my mentors have done and that's what I will continue to do. And for anybody watching this video, if you're worried about something or you're, you're sad about something, if you feel like you've got nobody to talk to, come and talk to me. I've always, got time to hear anybody's issues. Um, I know what it's like and I'm willing to help anyone. Um, so hopefully this video has really helped you kind of understand my journey through Uber. I really focused on anxiety um, in this one and kind of how I realign myself. Um, the next episode is our final episode and it's going to recap kind of some really, really important things that I mentioned in episodes one, two and three. Um, and also thank some people as well, um, because I would have never been able to do this um, a year ago. And there's some really important people in my life that I need to thank for that. So um, thank you so much for watching. It means the world um, and uh, have a great day.